The first one, obviously, they need to do is return to the Lord. They have been walking away from the Lord. They've been walking contrary to God's laws, contrary to God's truth. They've been going their own way. And repentance is turning around and returning to the Lord. So you want to see that when a person is broken, they cry out to God. That's what David did. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. So that's the first thing. That's what the prodigal son did. He returned to his father. That's what a prodigal does, returns to his heavenly father. The uh, prodigal son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. Jeremiah says, Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am merciful, but return. You've turned your back on God, walked away, now come back to the Lord. And when you come back to the Lord, the second step, acknowledge your sin to the Lord. You've come back to him, and as the prodigal did, I have sinned against you. No excuses, no rationalizations, taking full responsibility for our wrong, wrongdoing. God doesn't want your excuses. God doesn't want your rationalization. God doesn't want you to justify. God doesn't care about that. But God is a marvelous listener to your honest confession. Psalmist David said, Then I acknowledged my sin to you, God. I didn't cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So hold nothing back, pour it out before him. Jeremiah 3.13 again. Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods and under every spreading tree, and you have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Taking your ownership of your own sins is critical. Read Psalm 32, Psalm 38, Psalm 51 are good models for owning your own stuff, for taking full responsibilities. And when we do the confessing, God does the cleansing. The cleansing won't take place until we're open and honest before God. So return to the Lord, acknowledge your sins to the Lord. Thirdly, forsake your sin. All provisions for repeating that sin must go. Romans 13, 12 to 14 says, The night is nearly over, the day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness, put on the armor of light, let us behave decently as in the daytime, and not in drunkenness, not in sexual immorality, not in debauchery, not in dissensions and jealousy. Rather, close yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Don't think about it. Get rid of provisions. If you've been involved in pornography, get every piece of pornography out of the house. Put a filter on your computer if you need to do that. If you're an alcoholic, get rid of every alcoholic beverage that you have around you. If you've been calling other people you shouldn't call, get rid of that address book. No provision for the flesh. That shows that honest intent of the heart. So you not only return to the Lord, acknowledge your sin, but by God's grace you forsake that sin. Proverbs 28, 13. He who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces his sin prospers. And the next thing that you need to do, you've made that clean break with sin now, you've dealt with it before the Lord, and you're clean before him. You've returned to him, your heavenly Father, You've acknowledged your sin. He's forgiven you and cleansed you. You have forsaken his, your sin by God's grace. Now, very important, you need to let God love you. 
Accept God's love, grace, and forgiveness for your sins. He has wiped the slate clean. Respond to the truth and receive the truth that God has forgiven and cleansed you of any and all and every sin. And what I encourage people to do is to understand what God has done with your sin. And I think key verses to meditate on deeply are these. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sin, sins from us. He's put them out of his sight. Secondly, the Bible says, God says, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud. I've done away with your sins like the morning mist. You, God, will tread our sins underfoot, hurl all our iniquities in the depths of the sea, Micah 7, 19. God made you alive with Christ. He forgave you all your sins. Dwell on that, accept it, believe it, respond to it, and don't let Satan or anyone else bring up your past and put it in your face and beat you up with it. God says, it's done. You've returned to me. You've acknowledged your sin. You've forsaken it. And I want you to know, as far as you and I are concerned, there's nothing between us. All is good. I have forgotten. I've wiped the slate clean. Done with it. Very, very important. One other, another step to take is to reaffirm your position in Christ. A great way to do that is to go through Ephesians chapter 1. And see what that scripture has to say about you and what's true of you. Reaffirming our position in Christ is essential. Let me give you some of the riches. In Ephesians 1 verse 3. God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. God chose you before the foundation of the world. Verse 4. Verse 5. He adopted you as his child. Verse 6, he freely bestows his grace on you. Verses 7 and 8, he has redeemed you and he has forgiven you. Verse 11, God works everything for you in conformity with his will. Verse 13, God has sealed you in Christ by his Holy Spirit. Understand your position in Christ. Start rejoicing that, reaffirm it. That's always been true of you as a believer, but you've lost sight of that when you've fallen. But now you've been broken and you've made your return back to the Lord. You've acknowledged your sin. You've forsaken your sin and you have realized how much God loves you and has forgiven you. And you go through a section like Ephesians 1 and you say, this is true of me. This is who I am. This is who I've been all along. I lost sight of it. But I am his beloved child, adopted into the family of God, and he freely bestows his grace upon me. And let that grip your soul. And the way to do that is to keep going in Ephesians 1. And beginning with verse 15 in Ephesians 1, you have a prayer for illumination. The Apostle Paul says, Lord, open the eyes of my heart that I might understand what you've done. The eyes of your heart, interesting expression. expression. But that's internalizing it, making it real to you. These can be words on a page and even words of scripture. But pray, God, help me to really see that, to grasp that. I have been far away from you. I thank you that you have broken me. I thank you that you have restored me, God. And this is who I am. Help me to really understand it, to appreciate it, and to live my life in the light of it. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. After the broken and repentant person has returned to the Lord, acknowledged their sin, forsaken their sin, and accepted God's love, grace, and forgiveness, 
and reaffirm their position in Christ. They need to make certain that they know how to resist the devil because the devil will still come at them with feelings of guilt and accusations and Satan doesn't want them to be free. They've been broken, they've repented, but Satan still wants to keep them on a guilt trip. So it's very important that that broken and repentant person knows how to use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, to resist Satan. And then there's sometimes another step that needs to be taken. The slate is clean, they're resisting Satan, but they need to examine themselves to see if they need to make any necessary restitution. Matthew 5, 23 and 24 says, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar, go first and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. The principle is, it's always your move. You want to have a conscience void of offense before God, and if you follow these steps, you've done that, but a conscience that's free before man. So is there any restitution that you need to make? And if so, then you need to go to that person that you've offended and name the offense as specifically as you can. Make no excuses. Don't try to justify your behavior. Acknowledge that we're wrong and ask for their forgiveness. Now here's a warning. Sometimes it's far easier to get God's forgiveness than it is man's. Sometimes people won't forgive you. But Romans 12, 18 says, as much as lies in you, live at peace with all men. Then you rest your case with God once you've done everything that you can, and most people will accept your apology. But in the, in the rare case where they don't, you have to know before God you've done what you could and you move on. Then to make sure that you don't relapse into uh, your sin is you need to acknowledge your weakness and your vulnerabilities to some trusted friends. Very important that you find people that you know, love you, care about you, want God's best for you, don't have their own agenda, and you need to share with them as openly as you can your vulnerabilities. And then become accountable to them. Uh, you can't force accountability from the outside. I've seen that happen, where people are gonna hold you accountable. But that usually causes more harm than good because they just want to keep you in bondage. They want to keep you uh, boxed in by accountability. But the best kind of accountability is comes from those trusted friends and you say, I want to be accountable to you. Feel free to ask me any question that you want at any time. You invite the questions. Feel free to question me. Ask me. I want you to ask me. How are you doing spiritually? And what steps are you taking to rebuild your walk with the Lord? And are you having victory in your thought life? Where are you struggling? How can we be praying for you? And if you invite those kind of questions with a group of trusted friends, that will help you stay on that right path. And then at some point, you just need to get on with your life and, and not let the past drag you down but just get on with your life and what God has for you. It's also important that those that are working to restore you can say, yes, we know that that person has returned to the Lord. We know that they've dealt with their sin. And we know the best that we can that they have forsaken their sin. They've reaffirmed their position with the Lord. They're walking with him. They're resisting the devil. They're accountable to us. It's nice to have somebody that's an advocate for you as part of a restoration team that can, anybody that raises question, can talk to those people, not just to you. So this is for the broken, repentant person. You remember my friend Jeff, who had fallen, fallen by the use of alcohol, as pressures built up in his life, how he lost his family, lost his health, lost his position, lost his home, went bankrupt, and down, down, down Jeff went. And finally, God began to break him. 
This is the way that Jeff describes the situation that he found himself in. He said, on the evening of Wednesday, November the 2nd, 2011, I sat, cur I sat curled in a ball, my back against the brick wall of an alley, a hood over my head, rain pounded down, soaking me to the bone. I was the picture of a homeless derelict. The world hates me, I thought. I hate me too. I can't stand who I've become. I've thrown away everything and everyone that was precious to me. I don't care, I said aloud, if I live or died. They found Jeff in that condition and they transported him to the hospital. And there for one month he was in intensive care, 10 days in a coma. They started his heart five different times and they really didn't think that Jeff would make it at all. But Jeff writes later, he said, God was using the physical breaking of my body to begin breaking my hardened heart. And God did break his heart. And Jeff repented. And we'll talk about that in another lecture.